Hello and welcome to part four of our microcontrollers tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at two new commands. The first command that we'll be looking at is analog write. Analog write will actually allow us to use certain pins on the microcontroller to simulate an analog output. Now I say simulate, it isn't actually going to create a varying voltage between zero and five, but it will create a pulse width modulated square wave that we can adjust the mark time on. Later, this mark time could be converted to an analog value. But for now, we're gonna use it as it is to dim an LED. The second command we're going to look at is actually a map command. Map command is a very powerful process where we can actually take one value range, let's say between zero and 1023, and we can actually map that value range out into another value range, for example, between zero and 100%. So it's a very useful method of converting one range of numbers into another range of numbers that we desire. So stay tuned and we'll get right to that in a minute. So for this tutorial, we're gonna need two things, a single LED, any color should do. I'll be using a red LED. And we'll also want the variable resistor that we used in a previous tutorial. To start with, we'll connect our LED up to a, a port that supports analog write. Not all ports on the microcontroller support analog write, so we'll have to choose one that supports it. And this is indicated by the little kind of up tick that's next to the port numbers. So let's have a closer look and we'll see if we can spot those. As we take a closer look at the Arduino here, you can actually see that some of these port numbers have a little kind of uptick or a swoosh next to them. And the ports that actually support this analog write command are ports three, five, six, nine, 10, and 11. One thing to note is the analog pins on the other side here do not support this command, so we won't be using those. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our single LED up to port 11 in this example. So we'll take our LED, find the negative leg or the cathode leg as indicated by the flat edge on the body of the LED. And we'll plug that into our ground port over here. And the leg that is the anode or the positive leg, we're gonna connect that up to pin 11. Now mine will actually turn on because I've already programmed this board. There we go. So again, double check your connection and we wanna be in pin 11 and pin ground. Okay, so what's the first thing we're gonna do? Well, we've already connected our LED to pin 11. So let's actually define this. So we'll start off with a hash define. It's turned green, so that's correct. And then let's call this uh, pin analog um, LED. Why not, LED pin. And that was pin 11. Now remember when we're defining a pin, we don't actually need to put the equals or the semicolon. So we'll leave it as it is for now. What we plan to do is make our LED different bright brightnesses. So we're gonna start off dim and get brighter. And to do that, we're gonna to have to have a variable that holds the value for brightness in. So let's actually create that variable. And I'm gonna call it brightness for now. And I'm going to make that equal zero. And this does need an equal sign and a semicolon. To change the brightness of our LED, we're actually going to add and subtract a number to brightness. Um, what shall we call that? I think I'm gonna call it increment for now. So I'm gonna call that increment. And I'm gonna give the increment value a value of five. It could be arbitrary, but I want this to step up. Now, one thing to note is the analog right command on the analog right pin supports a, a number between zero and 255. Now off the top of my head, I have a feeling that zero will actually create the brightest output, so the LED will be fully on, and I think 255 is actually the gonna reduce the brightness of the LED to its minimum, so the LED will be off. But for now, I'm gonna start with an increment value of five, and we'll start at zero, and we'll step up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and we'll increase and decrease the value of the LED using five increments. We could make that one, we could make it 10, we could change that, but we'll play with that later. Then we're going to need um, a delay. So 
how long will it stay at this brightness before moving on to the next step? So we need a delay. Uh, I'm going to do int delay. And what shall I pull in there for now? I think I'm going to put um, 10 milliseconds. I don't need a bracket, sorry. I need an equal sign. And I'm going to put 10 and the semicolon. And we'll leave that there for now. So in the setup, what are we going to use in the setup? Now, when we made an LED turn and off, on and off, we actually used a pin mode and we set the pin mode to either output or input. We haven't done an input yet, but we could set it to an input. For the analog write command, we don't actually need to set the pin up. It will do that automatically when we set the analog write command. So for now, we can actually leave setup blank. But what I do want to do is I want to push some of these numbers in the variables up to our serial monitor so I can actually see what's going on. Um, if I didn't, I could leave this out, but I do. So I'm going to put in serial begin. So capital S serial dot begin. And in brackets, I'm going to put 9600. And that will turn our serial ports on so we can send some information to the computer. And actually, that's all we need in setup. So now we come down to our void loop. And we're going to put all our code that repeats forever inside here. So what, what do we plan to do? Well, let's actually, first of all, send a value to the LED. And the first value we're going to send is going to be 0, because that's what we've set brightness to. So let's actually put the command in to analog write to the LED pin. And to do that, we're going to write out the command analog, capital W for write. It's turned amber, so it's good. Start bracket, and then we're going to do our analog LED pin, comma. And what value do we want to send? We're going to send that brightness value. And with the bracket and semicolon. And then what we're going to do is we need to adjust that brightness value. At the moment, the last command we've put in has sent the value 0 to the LED. I think that makes it fully on. So we're going to need to um, increment that value up by adding our increment value. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to say brightness is equal to the brightness and then we're going to add that increment value, which is currently set to 5. And then we're going to finish that in the semicolon. So that 0 after this line has turned into 5. Now what would happen is if we just looped around here, it would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way up. And eventually we get to 255. And then it would just go 260, 265. And that would actually cause some problems. We'd probably turn our LED off or it would flash on and off. Um, and we're never going to get to a point where the LED starts to decrease in brightness. So it's going to just go one way and not the other. So what we're going to have to do is put an if statement in. An if. And we're going to check if our brightness value is between or outside two values. It's going to be outside two values. So I'm going to start a bracket. And we're going to use um, an OR statement in this example. So we're going to say brightness is less than or equal to 0, or the brightness is greater than or equal to 255. Then we're going to change how we're subtracting or adding the increment value. So let's write this out, and we'll see how it works. So first of all, I'm going to do brightness is less than or equal to 0. And then the OR command, or the OR logical function, rather, is these two straight lines. That's the um, backslash key near the shift on the left-hand side. And then on the second part of this OR check, I'm going to do brightness greater or equal to 255. Then we're going to put our bracket. And because it's an if statement, we start our if statement with a curly bracket. And if I hit enter now, let's scroll down a bit, we'll see that when I press enter, it actually puts the end of that curly bracket in. So this is what happens. So if either of these 
are correct. So if that one or that one are correct, um, if brightness is 255 or greater, or if brightness is less than or equal to zero, what we need to do is switch the value of increment into a negative value. So what we can do is we basically say increment equals the negative of increment. So think about this now. Um, increment was five, and then if we make increment equal the negative of five, it's basically gonna make increment negative five. Now think if, if increment was already negative five, and we made it equal negative five again, two negatives make a positive, if that makes sense. So it starts off a positive number, when it goes through this line of code, it becomes negative. If it's a negative number, it becomes a positive number. And then we end our if statement here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to keep an eye on these values. I actually want to see these on my serial monitor. So what I'm going to do is put some serial prints in here. Let's do that. Make a bit of space. Remember, this curly bracket here, that's the end of void loop, always wants to remain on the end of our program. There it is. And I'm going to put our serial prints in, capital S-E-R-I-A-L dot print, all small. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print this brightness value. But I don't want to just plot a number up there. I'm going to give it a text name. So to do that, I'm going to use my uh, speech mark, if you remember that. Then I'm going to type brightness. And I'm going to put an equal sign, so space equals. And then I don't want the number stuck straight to the equal, so I'm going to put a space, speech mark, end bracket, semicolon. Then I want to actually plot that number out, so I'm going to do serial print again. And this time I'm going to serial print the brightness value, that's the actual variable. So 5 or 0 or whatever, it will be changing. Uh, semicolon on the end of that. Now all I want to do is actually plot the increment value and I want to divide this up from the other so I want kind of brightness and then increment value um, on the same line but I want them separated so I can easily see that they're separated so to do that I'm going to print another line of text so serial dot print and then another batch of text and my other batch of text is going to be um, a space again that straight line that we use for the or speech mark end bracket and a semicolon. So now we're going to plot that on the screen. Then I'm going to do my serial print and I'm going to text print the word increment. Oh, I've spelt that wrong, haven't I? Increment, close my bracket. Uh, I want to put an equals in this. So I'm going to do a space equals space semicolon and then finally what I want to do is actually print out the increment value so I will actually do serial dot print then I'm going to type the variable name increment close bracket and semicolon now that will print all of that in a single line but then I want the next time it gets printed to be on a new line. So on this last one here, I'm going to put LN and that will create our new line. Right, let's program that in and see what happens. First of all, we've got to name it. So I'm going to name it um, LED Fade. I've already got one, so I'm going to rename it LED Fade 2. You can call it LED Fade. Hit enter and it gets ready to upload it. Now, if you have trouble uploading, don't forget to check your uh, COM port is correct and that the board you're using is correct, but it looks like mine's uploaded fine. Okay, so there we have it. It's uploaded fine. We can actually see our LED is fading on and off. Nice. So let's have a little play with some of the numbers. So actually, if we increase the delay time here, what we're actually going to do is uh, slow down the rate of the fade, so let's do that. Now we can see the brightness and the fading of the LED happens much slower. Um, let's drop that back down to 10. 
But let's actually drop our increments up to say 20. So we'll actually have less steps now, so it'll look cruder, you know, it'll actually look uh, more steppy. So let's program that in. And because we've got less steps, it actually happens quick, quicker, so let's uh, actually delay it. And there's another problem you'll see, and that is actually that the LED kind of goes completely off when it gets bright and then comes back down again. So it's kind of like um, blinking off twice as often. And that's a bit annoying. So let's see what's gone wrong. We'll actually open up our serial monitor and here we have our values being shown. So we can see the value for brightness and sure enough it's going up and down in increments of 20 but it looks like it overshoots. I say our maximum value is uh, 255. If I turn the auto scroll off here, yeah there it is, spotted. So it goes up to 260 and 260 is above our 255. So we actually want to adjust our code a bit to get rid of that blinking. So 240 looks fine. Yeah, it, it gets to 240. So let's actually adjust this number down here and say, if the brightness gets to 240 or above, we start going the other way. So let's program that one in. Um, we'll leave that 100 millisecond delay there. And now we can see we've actually got rid of that uh, dead spot at the end there. So now we are actually fading up and down correctly. And if we look into our serial monitor, turn the auto scrolling back on, you can see those values are going up and down nicely. Now in this other column here, we can see that increment value and it's starting kind of positive and then halfway up it flips into a negative. Let's actually have a closer look. So yeah, we are incrementing, adding 20, we get to 220, we add 20, it's 240. Then it says, hang on a moment, we've got to 240. That's the maximum we can get to. So now let's make the increment value negative 20. And then it starts scrolling the other way around. So that's how our program is working. Let's actually put our increment value back to five. And I'm gonna drop our delay value back to 10. And I'm going to take our brightness value back to its original 255. So nice little program there that just simply makes an LED go bright and dim. And we've created a little if statement here that cycles between adding or subtracting a value. And it actually switches a positive number that we're adding into a negative number that when we add is actually subtracting. Uh, we've got our serial prints. That's great. So... That's it for that part of the program. But what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna use our map function. So mapping means that we're gonna take this value and instead of displaying it on our serial console as zero to 255, let's actually display it between zero and 100%. Now all I don't wanna do is change these values because the 255 is needed to make the analog right work and the zero works as well. But what we can do is we can handle these numbers, and by handle them, I mean the value for brightness, we're gonna handle that using a map feature. And map can actually convert one number range, in this example, zero to 255, into another number range. And I wanna do it in percentage, and percentage ranges from zero to 100%. So let's go ahead and put our map command in for the first time. To do this, we're gonna have um, to create a new variable. So I'll write out the command first, then we'll make our variables. So the command we're gonna use, and I think I do want it before we serial print, because if you think about the logical order, do we wanna map right now? No, because we haven't actually done anything yet, but we will make the LED light up, then we will uh, increment that number, then we'll check to see if the number is outside of our range. If it is outside of our range, we switch whether we are incrementing or subtracting and then we will map that number before sending it out on the serial monitor. So the map command, we're gonna save the mapped number into a variable and I'm gonna call that variable here percentage or percent, percent for short. And then the command is simple, it's map, okay, map. And then what are we gonna map? Well, we're gonna map the value of brightness and that value goes between zero comma 255. And then the range we want it to be mapped into will end up being 
0, 100, uh, end bracket semicolon. And I'm just going to put some comments on the end of this. This is the first time we've seen it. And I'm going to say uh, the output number, well, let's call it the output val, will equal the map of the input val. There we go. And then this is in max, no, sorry, in min. And this one is in max. And then the next number is going to be out min. And the next one will be out max. So I've just written a little comment there about how to actually structure this command. Now we've got some problems. The first problem is we can't just make percentage all of a sudden exist. Well, we could. We could int it here. But for the moment, we're going to stick to the etiquette of pulling it up here. So let's actually create our variable called percentage. Int percent. That was what we called it. And I'm going to make it equal zero. And we've done that. That's all fine. And then what we actually need to do is see the percent number somehow. So we are going to now serial print that as well. And to do that, we're going to uh, first of all do some text. So I'm actually going to copy this line right here. Let's copy it and paste it. There we go. And I'm going to call this one percent or percentage. Let's actually call it percentage. It's going to take up quite a bit of space actually. So we'll just call it percent. Uh, we want that space and an equals and then another space. Between the increment and percentage, let's actually put another one of these dividers in. So I'm just going to copy this. This was our like divisional line, and it's only there as a graphic to split brightness from increment. Let's do the same for percentage. There we go. And then we want to actually print this percent variable. Remember, to print a variable onto our serial monitor, we just put the variable name in without speech marks. And then finally, we need to think about LN. Well, we don't want an LN here now because we want the same line to continue. And then at the end, we will have LN. So let's upload this and see what difference that makes. To our LED, that makes no difference at all. Nothing's changed. But let's have a look in Serial Monitor and see what's happening. I've done it wrong, haven't I? Um, what's gone on here? So we've now got... Yeah, I've done it wrong, haven't I? Because I didn't actually update this variable name. Anyone spot that? So let's actually go back and update that variable name to percent. So we actually now put our percent to our serial monitor. Open up the serial monitor again. And now we can see this percentage value. And it's going from 0 up to 100 and then back down from 100 to 0. So what we're basically doing is we're taking this value that ranges between 0 and 255 and we're mapping it so now it comes out at a value of 0 to 100. Brilliant. It's a very useful function if we are measuring, let's say, a battery voltage and the values from the analog pin are between 0 and 1023 and we actually want to then convert that back into a voltage value. There's loads of times where we might actually want to see a very large number and then map that into say well exactly this zero to a hundred percent we might have one device that gives us a value between one and five hundred and another device that can only accept a value between zero and fifty so we could use the map or we could actually just divide the value in that example but very very useful for where we've got fractions and other kind of complex numbers as well let me freeze this i would like this to say one hundred percent well, with the map command, that's very easy. I'm just going to come back into my map. The initial value for brightness is going to stay the same. But now I'm going to make the first number, which is the out minimum, 100. And I'm going to make the out maximum, 0. And if I reprogram that, open up my serial monitor, turn the auto scroll back on, let it cycle through, and then get a freeze frame we can now see our brightness value is zero the led is fully on and the percentage value is now 100 so we've actually flipped it the other way just by changing a couple of uh, figures in the code there so remember that very very powerful command this 
So at this point, it'd probably be wise to save this code and we'll save it as LED fade. But what we'll do is we'll actually open up a new bit of code. Let's start getting into the practice of putting some commentary at the start of our program. So I'm gonna put a comment here. Um, this will change the brightness of an LED using a variable resistor. There we go. We'll also use serial out. So we'll also serial out the values. Okay, great. So what we're going to do, well, we're going to do the same thing we did before. So we're going to have an LED connected to pin 11. So let's define that. Define and what should we call it? We'll call it LED pin this time for short, even though we're going to be using analog out. And we'll just call it pin 11 because we know that supports analog out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the int and we need somewhere to save this brightness value. So int brightness is going to be equal to zero. That's fine. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need the variable resistor pin. So let's actually define the variable resistor pin as well. Define, uh, what should we call it? A VR pin. Does that make sense for variable resistor pin? And that one is going to be a zero because it must be connected to our analog zero pin. We'll also have to create a variable to save our VR pin value into. So let's actually do that and we'll call this one the VR, uh, what shall we call it? We'll call it VR pin value for now. There we go. And we'll create that to be zero as well. It's good practice to make them zero to start with. Is that all the variables we need? Um, Note we are gonna do the map as well. So let's do another one which is the percentage for map. Let's just call it percent for short and we'll make that one zero as well. So that's it for now. Um, do we need to do any setups? Well, we're gonna turn our serial port on again. So let's do that one and we'll call it serial.begin and that is 6,000, no, 9,600. There we go. And that's it for now. So what do we need to do in our loop? Well, there's a few things that we need to make this work. First of all, we're going to read the VR pin value, okay? Now this value will turn up between zero and 1023. So the next thing we need to do is we'll need to map the value from this pin, which we're gonna save into pin value here. We'll need to map that into a value that will work for brightness. And that value will need to be between zero and 255 and then we also want to map the percentage value that the LED is on, and we'll do that into percentage. So what we're gonna do down in loop, first of all, we'll actually read that variable resistor value. So we're gonna say the VR pin value is equal to uh, the analog read. So we're gonna do an analog read using capital R there, turned Amber, so that's great. And what are we gonna read? Well, we're gonna read the VR pin value. So VR pin, which is A0, end bracket, semicolon. So now whatever value is on that VR pin is gonna be saved into VR pin value. Now that value will be between zero and 1023 that is its minimum and maximum value that the analog pin supports uh, if you don't know that you'd have to google it what's the maximum or you could connect your variable resistor up use the serial plotter and actually have a look and see oh well if i turn it all the way this way it's zero if i turn it this way it's 1023 and we did that in one of the previous examples so if you're un unsure of that, go back and watch one of the previous tutorials. Then we're gonna do a couple of maps. So the first map we're gonna do will be the brightness. So let's actually map that brightness. So brightness will equal the mapping or the map of VR pin, VR pin value and we, um, comma, we know that VR pin value can go down to zero, 
comma and the maximum it can go to is 1023. Then we're going to do the comma and the next values will be the values of our brightness and that will be between 0 and 255. There we go, close the bracket semicolon. And now we could do the mapping into percentage. Now we could take percentage from either of those values, couldn't we? We could either say, um, give me the percentage compared to the VR pin value, or we could do it from brightness. Let's actually do it from brightness. So the next one is going to be percent. And this time it's going to be the map of brightness. And what's the minimum value of brightness? Well, it's zero. What's the maximum value of brightness? Well, it can go up to 255, comma. What's the minimum value of our percentage? Zero, and the maximum is 100. Let's try that. So I have a feeling it's gonna be the wrong way around. I feel like uh, the we're gonna push zero out on the analog, analog right command, and that's gonna make the LED fully bright, but we're gonna be showing 0%. So I'm actually going to switch it around um, just because I, I know from last time we've, we've just done it and it was the wrong way around. So I'm going to do 100 to 0. That will kind of flip it. And then we'll do the close bracket, the semicolon. And now that we've handled our numbers, we can actually send that value out to our LED. So to do that, we're going to use the analog command. Right. Then we're going to do, what are we going to analog write? Well, we're going to write to the LED pin, which we call LED pin. There we go. LED pin. Then we're going to do our comma. And what are we actually going to send to this LED pin? Well, we're going to send that brightness value. Like so. Close the bracket and put the semicolon on. But what I do want to do is make use of my serial out. Uh, so we're going to, of course, use our serial print commands. And we're going to print each of these values. We're going to put some shorthand in to speed things up a bit. And we'll just print them all to the serial monitor. So I'm going to use my serial print. There we go. Um, first thing I'm going to print is VR pin value. So I'm actually going to just call it speech mark VR space like so that will just shorten it a bit i'll try and do them all in a row this time so we'll go copy and paste paste this one in now we actually want our vr pin value in this next one there we go we don't want the speech marks because we're actually plotting a, a changing value um, then what i'll do is actually put my divider in this row let's put this divider in and what do I mean by divider? It was that space, straight line space. That's got us ready to start our next row. I'm going to copy this whole row to speed it up. There we go. And in this row, we're actually going to show our brightness value. So what shall I call that? BRT for bright. And then we're going to put our brightness value. I'll copy that. Control C and Control V. Then we've got that divider in again. And these will all be printed on one line because I haven't put an LN in yet. Let's do a last one. And this last one, we're going to call it per for percentage. And in here, we're actually going to value the value of percent. There we go. And this time, I don't want a divider on the end, but I will put a percent symbol just for the fun of it. So there's our percent symbol. And when we get to this end and we've done the percent symbol, we want to get ready to plot all of this again on a new line. So I'm actually going to put LN in here. And do I have a delay this time? No, I don't have a delay because actually we just want it to stay at that fixed value until I've changed the variable resistor. So let's program that in and see how it goes. I've got to save it. So I'm gonna call this one LED dimmer. Now I've got uh, some errors. Look at look how naughty I am. I've missed all of these semicolons out. So I need a semicolon. One there. One there. One there. One in there. Oh, I didn't notice that. There we go. Another one. Oh, that needs its capital S on it. And one there. Hopefully that was the only error. Let's try again.
That's it, it's gone in, it's programmed. For this final example, we're gonna go back to using our variable resistor here. I'm gonna connect this up to our analog zero pin, so let's do that. We'll connect one leg of the variable resistor to ground, the black one, there we go, to ground. We'll connect the other side, which is going to be our positive leg. There it is, up to 5 volts. So we find the 5 volt pin, plug it in. There we go. And then this centre pin, we're going to take to A0. And here we have a serial monitor going. Now actually, I've got things wrong. You can see my percentage value is zero, but my LED is at full brightness. So to correct that, what do I need to do? Give it some thought. Well, I want to switch that zero into 100. So all I do is I'll go back to my program. See, my initial thought was wrong. I'm just going to change that value from zero. That value from zero to 100. Program that in. Now we can see that the brightness is at 255, which is fully on. The percentage is at 100%, and as I bring my variable resistor down, you'll see those numbers changing. So the true value of the variable resistor is 1000. The brightness value is 249, and the percentage of the total is 97% bright. So let's actually take it down to 50% brightness and all the other numbers should tally. Let's see, 50% brightness, can I get it exact? There we go. So for 50%, we're actually on 219. Yeah, 219, 220. The brightness value is 129, and the percentage is 50. So we're a little bit out from the exact, but it's fairly accurate. So. Hopefully that makes sense. A very powerful set of commands there. So here we have a device called an oscilloscope. This piece of testing equipment can actually be used to trace out the signals that are found on various wires. So here we can see this red trace is going all over the place and that's actually picking up signals from my body, from around the room. Um, if I actually connect this to there, that should stabilise it somewhat, a little bit. And what we're going to do is connect our probe lead here up to our LED. One side will go to the negative leg and the other side will go to our positive leg. There we go. And the device itself actually auto scales. So here we have our square wave. It's actually a square pulsing wave called PWM for pulse width modulation. Fancy name, but essentially what we're gonna do is we, as we adjust the brightness of the LED, you can see the amount of time that this wave is high, and remember high is on, low is off, directly relates to how bright the LED is. So if I bring this all the way down, I'm turning my potentiometer to basically the wave has gone to zero, it's disappeared, the LED is basically off. If I start to bring that wave back up again, we've actually lost our wave now, I'll have to let it rescan re and find it, there it is. As we bring this wave up, the amount of on time increases and the brightness of the LED also increases. Well, that's it for today. Thanks very much for tuning in.